Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video. And today we have our unboxing and first look review of the brand new Dell XPS 159530, the venerable flagship from Dell that I've reviewed pretty much every iteration since, it's the, since the beginning, uh, as far as when it was released. Now, as far as this laptop is concerned, it's pretty much physically the same, exactly the same as last year's 9520. So where you're gonna see the changes are going to be under the hood. It's now out outfitted with 13th gen Intel processors, H series will get into the performance numbers, of course, a little bit in this review as well as in the full review. And of course it has an RTX 4070 GPU with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 video memory. So we're hoping to get an increase in the graphics performance and really good creative laptop. If you wanna do Photoshop, Lightroom, video editing and the like, this is going to be a really, really good laptop for that. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look review of the Dell XPS 15 9530, all new for 2023. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell, I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money, but at some point I do expect to get a review unit from Dell, so stay tuned for that. Now, the starting price is $23.99, and right now over at Dell's website, only the Core i9 is available. That, of course, comes with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 GPU. That's the one I have here. Now, as far as the Core i7, from what I understand, it will be available in another week or so, so stay tuned. And, of course, check out the link in the description below for the latest pricing. Now, my unit here that I purchased with my own money comes in at $2,849. I went with 30 two gigabytes of RAM. I only went with the 512 in terms of the SSD because I'm going to upgrade that myself. And of course, I went with the OLED display. So all in, I'm talking about 3000 plus with tax here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, this is their flagship, and of course, it's priced accordingly. But of course, if you go to Apple and other brands with their premium flagships, very competitive in terms of the pricing. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's take the plastic off. And no surprises, very premium packaging so far. And there she is. I don't think they're offering this in white. I didn't see an option like we did a couple of years ago. You get your power cord, no surprises here. We've seen this before. You get your 130 watt power charger right there. You can see it there as it comes into focus. Uh, pretty, pretty nice, pretty compact. I think that's the same we've seen in the past. And then of course, some documentation. So 9530 and some regulatory information, warranty, safety information, yada, yada, yada. We've seen all this before. So this is the uh, little hub they give you, little adapter, and of course it has HDMI in it, and it also has a USB-A on this side, and has a flip-out USB-C connector. So again, HDMI, and then of course USB-A. So we like to see that. The physical exterior is going to be the same as we've seen in the past. So has a little bit of heft, you can see it here. And there she is, okay. It's a little blown out because of the silver here, but of course you're gonna have the carbon fiber in the interior. You can take a look to see the full-size SD card reader over there. We'll look at the ports in a moment. And on this side, you get the two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Let's uh, take a look at it from here. Let's see, of course, you know you can open it with one finger and you can, so there it is. I have the OLED, of course. I only go with the OLED because I love OLED, but that's just me. 
And then, of course, you have the carbon fiber deck. 9530 here, gorgeous design. I still love this design, people. Love the keyboard on it. Always have been a fan of it. Carbon fiber deck is gorgeous when there's no fingerprints on it, but it will collect fingerprints at some point. And the exterior can is prone to getting scratches. I've had that in the past, although you may want to get a skin from, say, D-Brand. Of course, they're not sponsored, but just might be something you might want to look into. And again, I like this uh, overall sleek looks here. So looking pretty good. So on the left side, we'll get to the ports right now. You have your Kensington lock port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports. They are full function, supporting data charge and display out. And then, of course, on this side, you're looking at a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, not Thunderbolt, by the way, but it is full function, and an, a full-size SD card reader and a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack builds looking good nice solid hinge here um you can see it here as far as very little screen wobble it's on really nice now one of the things we want to make sure is that the touchpad is on nice and tight let's get a listen seems okay but of course i'll have to see how it works in real world usage now, as far as user upgradability, like last year's model, pretty much everything is upgradable in terms of the RAM. There are two SOTUM slots. They're going with DDR5 RAM. My unit has 32 gigabytes of RAM, two 16 sticks, but of course you can go up to 64, two 32 gigabyte sticks of RAM. So I like that upgradability as far as the memory is concerned. Now, as far as the SSD is concerned, PCIe Gen 4, there are two slots, which is great when you want to expand out the storage and check out these excellent reads and writes. Certainly Gen 4, Four speeds here we'd like to see in 2023. And as far as wireless is concerned, we're looking at killer Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. That combo card is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user. But as far as the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth so far, working pretty good. Although I wish it was Wi-Fi 6E, not Wi-Fi 6. Just something to be aware of. And for those wondering, the internals are exactly the same as the 9520 from last year. So the only difference between the two units is going to be the CPU and the GPU, but everything else as far as the physical attributes are going to be the same. And like last year's model, this also sports a six cell 86 watt hour battery. And of course, I will do my full testing and give you the battery life numbers and charging time as well in the upcoming full review. And to put it into reference, of course, last year's model got 12 hours and two minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, but I've moved to the PC Mark 10 modern office battery life test. So we'll check that out as well on both models. That's coming up in that full review. Now to get an idea of the graphics performance out of this RTX 4070, I ran the 3D Mark Firestrike and the score I got was 16,791. So that's actually gonna be pretty decent in terms of the graphics performance. Of course, I wouldn't categorize this laptop as a gaming laptop per se. I think it's more for creatives to do like video editing, Photoshop and the like. But if you wanna play games, certainly capable here on that 4070 GPU. And here's the Time Spy score, 7,622, a little bit more demanding, of course, than the Fire Strike test. So definitely respectable numbers here so far. Now, of course, I'm going to test out the games, bring you the numbers in terms of the performance as far as the results are concerned in that upcoming full review. I have a lot more testing to do, so stay tuned. So a lot more to come, ladies and gentlemen. I have a lot of testing to do, but the initial benchmarks look good. This 13th gen H series processor looks promising as well as the RTX 4070 GPU. But of course, the proof is always in the pudding. And of course, the thermals, as far as this is concerned, is going to play a major role, especially in this thin and light chassis that is contained here. So we're going to have to do all that testing, especially the thermal performance. I'll bring you all that. Now, as far as the surface temperatures are concerned and the initial benchmarks that I'm able to run here, never getting overly hot, although there were a couple of hot spots here and there, as you see here, but nothing alarming, nothing too hot to the touch, which is good, especially on a thin and light chassis that this has. Now, as far as the fan noise, the dual fans will kick in under the performance mode, under heavy load, and it will be noticeable. You're looking at around 52, 53 decibels, so definitely very noticeable fan noise, especially when it is under heavy load, something to bear in mind.
Now, to me, one of the stars of the show, if not the star of the show, was going to be its Infinity Edge display. There are two options when it comes to the display, a Full HD Plus option, it's 1920 by 1200, and of course, an OLED option. Now, the Full HD Plus option is a non-touch display that can get as bright as 500 nits. And then, of course, the OLED option, which is the option I went with, is a little bit better in terms of the color accuracy and, of course, the coverage of the color gamut. And that one, of course, is a touch display with an anti-reflective coating that can get as bright as 400 nits. Of course, I'll bring you all the measurements in my upcoming full review. Now, the resolution on the OLED display is 3456 by 2160. And yes, these are 16 to 10 aspect ratios. And the benefit, of course, going with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio is you'll see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. Now, the display is an HDR display watching high dynamic range content. Say Netflix, Amazon, YouTube has been excellent so far in the limited time that I've used it. But it's pretty much the same display, actually the exact same display as last year's model. So I'm pretty familiar with it, what it's capable of and really, really great for consuming media. There's no doubt about it. Now, one thing I wish it did have was a higher refresh rate. This is a 60 hertz display, and for creative work, it's going to be fine. But if you want to do any kind of gaming or anything that with a higher refresh rate, giving you the more fluid experience, the smoother experience of a 120 hertz, say, like you get with a Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra and the like, you don't get that here. And especially at this price point, and it's a premium flagship, maybe next year we'll see a higher refresh rate, maybe even a dynamic refresh rate like we saw on that Samsung laptop. But the touch layer on this OLED display is excellent. It's very responsive. And I love being able to navigate through windows with my finger as well as doing pinch to zoom and the like. Really, really handy. So unfortunately, we get a 720p webcam on their 2023 flagship device. Not really great here in 2023, especially when we see like HP killing it with their 1440p camera on some of their Dragonfly models and so forth, or at least the 1080p. We've seen a lot of them on Lenovo as well. So we'd like to see it here on the XPS line, their flagship consumer line. Uh, definitely not great. But of course, as a 720p camera, this is certainly adequate for doing your Skype calls, your Zoom calls, work from home, hybrid, whatever you may need. Of course, you could always go to a, an external camera. I know Dell makes the ultra sharp 4K. I showed it in my live unboxing of this laptop. If you didn't see it, I'll drop a link to the live unboxing replay in the description below. What do you think about the video? What do you think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comments section below. One thing to note before I go here, is that it is an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition. That is pretty good. And then, of course, there is the fingerprint scanner. The power button doubles as the fingerprint scanner, allowing you to log in with Windows Hello as well. Again, let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Now, of course, I'll test the speakers on this. They've been pretty good over the years. Of course, I don't think they're quite as good as the MacBook Pro, but of course, we'll get a comparison between the two. So stay tuned. That audio comparison will be coming. But as far as the audio is concerned, I'm very happy with consuming media. The audio experience has been good, gets pretty loud. The mids have been good. The bass has been pretty good and fills up the room rather nicely. Again, I'll give you the audio sample and that is all coming in the full review. So stay tuned. So stay tuned. My full review of the XPS 15 will be coming very soon. Rest assured, I will have comparisons as well as updated videos on this really great flagship laptop. Again, I, like I said, I'm a big fan, but of course, it's not perfect. We're going to get into the pros and the cons. Stay tuned. That full review will be coming very soon. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.